Thank you for those very practical insights on um, being in control of our finances and also um, parenting as well, not just for today, but also for tomorrow. Here at the platform, we've had clergy, politicians, um, technocrats, and um, academics, but we've never had royalty. So it's with great honor that I welcome our next speaker, Prince Abimbola Olashere. He's an engineering graduate of the University of Hull, UK, and a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Nigeria. He also holds an MBA from IESC Business School, Barcelona, Spain. He's a seasoned investment banker who over the years has acquired in-depth knowledge and vast experience in the capital market, as well as financial advisory services in public and private sectors. Mr. Lashery began his career with Deloitte, Adayton and ECJ and Co. in 1987, where he became a qualified chartered accountant in 1990. Then he moved into industry, joining Lead Bank PLC in 1991. He progressed rapidly, becoming the substantive CEO barely 10 years after in January 2000. In April 2006, Mr. Olashere joined Ecobank Transnational Group as Executive Director, Wholesale Banking Group. A year later, he became the CEO of Lead Capital PLC and was involved in promoting the firm into a full-fledged investment banking outfit with subsidiaries in stockbroking, asset management and advisory services with branches across Nigeria. Since December 2015, he has served as CEO of Lead Advisory Partners, which provides specialized consulting services to entrepreneurs seeking to grow their businesses. Prince Olashere is the Chairman, Board of Governance, Olashere International School. Let us welcome him as he speaks on maximizing the possibilities in this economic climate. I'm not so sure I need this. Good. Good morning, and happy Workers' Day. First of all, I must thank uh, Pastor Kodjuro and the Covenant Christian Center for your kind invitation to speak on maximizing the opportunities. The letter said in the new economic uh, climate, but I'm going to tweak it a bit. I'll call it the unfolding economic uh, climate. Because sometimes when we say things are new in Nigeria, we realize it's more of the same. So it's a question of what is actually uh, unfolding. And the key target is going to be about the young entrepreneurs. What do they need to know? So I'll be talking really around uh, that uh, uh, topic. And in terms of uh, a structure, I'll try and look at the economic climate. And I'll try and look at what exactly do the entrepreneurs need uh, to know, and especially their role. And we'll address the issue of entrepreneurship. The question is, can everybody be an entrepreneur? So I'll spend some time talking about employability. Then in particular, it's all about the enabling environment. So we can't, talk, we can't run away from looking at the environment that we're in and how can this environment actually support uh, entrepreneurship. There's a saying by a very good entrepreneur that is really well known, Richard Branson. If someone offers you an amazing opportunity and you're not sure you can do it, say yes, jump into it, then later you figure out what to do. So the key here is, the environment is still unfolding. But what I'll tell people is, jump in, take advantage. I'll be a bit optimistic. Sometimes the environment makes you so pessimistic. But I believe the glass is what? It's half full. So all I have to do is put in my, my effort, and I will get there. And in particular, we have a country with a great number of young people, which has its own problem, in that a country with a very young demographic is throwing up problems for the future if you don't create jobs and if there are no opportunities for them. Then in particular, 2016 was the year of the so-called negative growth, recession. So therefore, you had decreasing opportunities. But at the same time, youth entrepreneurship is a means to boost competitiveness and employment in modern economies. Our younger entrepreneurs have the potential to build new companies. And in particular, they bring energy they bring alternative ideas, and they bring particularly fresh perspectives. So the key is, how do we engage everybody in this particular journey? In this environment, there are two aspects we must look at it. We have an entrepreneurial 
environment. I was in Nigeria are so entrepreneurial. Everybody is hustling. And I like that word. What is your hustle? Everybody seems to be hustling. But there are serious challenges. The biggest one is the cost of doing business, the state of the infrastructure. How do you get there's the venture capital industry? It's still at its infancy, so you can't really get startup uh, loans. You have inconsistent government policies. The incentives, even if you start a business, this year there are incentives, the following year it is removed. How do you put with it? Multiple taxation. Then if you are one that can invent and you're good, how do you deal with a legal environment? We don't enforce patent laws. People copy what you've done. Intellectual property is not, is not respected. Then, to make matters worse, our societal values. I'll do the issue of uh, trust. Then when I look at the entrepreneurs specifically, what exactly do you do? What do I sell? Which aspect of the, of the economy should I operate in? Then how do I market? The lock is that the internet is there nowadays. How do I with cash flow? How do I deal with growth? Then in particular, I think the big elephant in the room, which I like talking about in Nigeria is, where do I get the people from? If I start my business, where am I going to get the people from? Because experience has told us that we have really debased our values, that the people you are calling to help you grow your business are at the same time competing with you. I like the one most people like quoting, multiple stream of income. And it turns up even in our earlier speaker's presentation multiple streams of income. Therefore, you are encouraged to have other sources of income. Now, what I've seen that has happened is that you are already in employment. And because you need to have multiple sources of income, you are doing what? You are doing another business while you are working with somebody else. Now, the problem with that is that most likely what you are doing, this year also is what? Highly what? Subsidized. You are using your present employer's telephone his workplace, he is in his official car, he is using everything. So as far as you are concerned, your also appears to be what? Profitable. Because it's highly what? You don't even pay yourself because somebody else is paying. Then what happens? You start becoming a bit cocky about it and I say, I can do it what? On my own. Then you go out and you start your business. And the reality now hits you. That you are not really an entrepreneur, you are just simply somebody that has taken uh, advantage. So you must have an understanding of the economic uh, uh, climate. And in, on, and in looking at it, so many things will define the climate that we work in. The monetary and fiscal policy, the state of the global economy, I'll, I'll touch on that. Unemployment levels, productivity, exchange rate, everybody uses the dollar to 